This is Mike Denbrock, Notre Dame's assistant head coach. He's in charge of the wide receivers. That's almost not fair for you to be in charge of such a great and enormously large group of talented receivers. Talk to me about really uh, the tough part about that. How do you manage all that talent? Because you've got a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, well, some of it's based on the type of offense that we run. We need a, a number of quality uh, competitors there as well as athletic players who can uh, you know make big plays in, in what we want to do because we want to get the ball out in space and and get it in the hands of our playmakers and that position needs to be full of them uh, so that we can rotate those guys in play fast and, and play the type of offense we want to play and that's important because you're hoping these guys are making big plays certainly in those formations they're running a lot so you can rotate talent of guys in who are always ready to go they're not winded and is that ever a consideration? Oh, absolutely. It's a big piece of the puzzle for us. I mean, it's taken us a while, uh, really the last probably three years, really, to build the type of quality depth there that we've needed uh, to play at the type of speed that we want to play at and also not fall off at the position as far as skill set or uh, ability to make those type of big plays. So uh, it's been a little bit of a process, but I think we're in more of a position today than we've ever been. And when you talk about receivers, you talk about catching the ball running with the ball, but I know in your offense, and you have so many receivers on the field, blocking is a huge part of that. They have to be able to not only just do their job there, but be effective in that end of the game. Yeah, that's, well, I mean, it's, it all starts there, and, uh, you know, we've obviously got a very talented offensive line and some talented backs, and we've got to contribute to the football team in the running game as well, and, and the way you do that is to get out there and be physical, and Make your plays when it's your opportunity to make your plays and do the things you're supposed to do in the passing game. But there's, there's so much more to being a complete player than just running and catching the football. And, and we try to make sure we instill that in them every day. You have talent in every class. So I'm going to let, I don't want to steer you in any direction right now. As the guy in charge of this unit, who are you most pleased with right now? Who's really stepped up in this fall camp? Boy, there's just a, there's a number of guys across the board. I, I you know I can look at any of the position groups. Uh, I think it starts with you know Nick Martin uh, at the center position and with our offensive line as everything does with offensive football and he's just done a great job there. Uh, you look at Ronnie Stanley and the things that he does as well from a leadership standpoint and his play speaks for itself. I mean he's one of the best in the country for a reason. Uh, you move to the running back position, Tarion Folston continues to impress and do some really good things and set a good example for the younger guys that we're trying to get some work and get some reps and, and get ready to play for us. Um, move to the quarterback position, Malik Zaire's done a great job with uh, what we've asked him to do. I mean, he's, you know, he's not a veteran starter. He's a guy who uh, has the ability to, to make a lot of plays, uh, whether it's running or passing with the football, but uh, doesn't have a great deal of experience, so we're trying to incorporate a lot of different dynamics into practice to make sure he gets the work he needs and he's done a great job of handling those situations and you know wide receiver wise you know we're, we're getting better and uh, we just need to build consistency here in the, in the dog days of August. It's almost like you're a wide receiver. I asked you to talk about wide receivers. You talked about everybody else <laughs> and we're just getting better. I'm deflecting. Let's talk about a guy though that already no one's really talking about because everybody expects him to be good but he's the key to this team. I think he's gotten better. Will Fuller. Yeah, Will is an explosive player, and, and uh, you know those who watch practice even today, uh, you know we threw him a little short little screen pass, and in uh, in my opinion, even though the officials didn't allow it, uh, ran it 70 yards for a touchdown untouched, and those are the type of plays he can make. You know, you get an athlete like Will who can, you put the ball in his hands and, and give him an opportunity to kind of get started. Uh, he's a hard guy to deal with. Get another one in the red zone today. You've got talent in every class of wide receivers. Uh, and one guy who finally is healthy is Torrey Hunter. This is the Torrey Hunter I know you recruited, but it's a Torrey Hunter the fans haven't seen yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to them getting an opportunity to get to know a little bit more about Torrey. Um, a very smart football player, uh, very savvy, understands the game of football very well. Uh, and on top of that, he's very gifted athletically, obviously, you know, plays on our football team and on our baseball team. and and uh, has a great uh, pedigree to go along with it and backs it up with the way he plays on the field. I know as a coach you really don't like talking about freshmen because they still have to pay their dues and they have a lot to learn, but you knew Equinemius St. Brown was a great talent and a great signee. Is he ahead of the game a little bit though right now with what he's been able to do these first few weeks? He is. I mean, he, he's had obviously some, some good teaching and coaching along the way, which kind of has helped him kind of advance his game a little bit, I think. Uh, sooner uh, than maybe one would expect for a true freshman. Uh, he's still got a lot of situational things that he's got to get a lot more 
um, kind of familiar with and, and put himself in those situations and learn how to play at the tempo we want to play at all the time. But, um, you know, to say he's uh, a bright spot would be an understatement. He's, he's done a really good job so far. You know, when you look at Brian Kelly's staffs throughout his many years of coaching, they've always had good chemistry and you are just like the team. There's no egos there, and you better subjugate your ego. You're not going to be on his staff. That said, in the world of college football, titles are important, duties are important. You have three offensive coordinators on this team, Coach Kelly, yourself, and Coach Sanford, and yet the three of you, you're putting the game plan together each week during the week as you head into uh, Saturday. It seems like you're all working so very well together. There's no bruised egos. There's no fighting over duties, that it's a true collaborative effort uh, that seems already to be paying dividends. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty simple when you really look at it in perspective. I mean, we ask our football team, we've got, you know, a number of talented football players that all can't play at the same time. There's only 11 guys on offense and defense at a time playing. And the coaching staff is the same way. I feel like we've got a really talented coaching staff, and we ask our players to sacrifice and make sure they, they do what's best for the team, and, and we demonstrate that in the offensive staff room as well. How would you, as an offensive coordinator, scheme against Jalen Smith? <laughs> that's a tough one uh, because uh, out of anybody uh, so far in fall camp, he, he has really grown, I think, as much as anybody as a player. I mean, his knack for finding the football, even when we're running misdirection things and, and trying to fool him, if you will, with, with some things, uh, he's been on top of his game from the very beginning of fall camp, so it's exciting.